Welcome to episode number seven of The Roar, for the show for all things Hershey Cubs, players, coaches, and personnel and news. I'm Clay Thomas, alongside Joshua Gerhardt, your hosts and broadcasters for the Cubs. With us today are Cubs team photographer Lauren Gettle. Thank you for joining us, and how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. I really appreciate Thanks for asking me to join, and I'm really excited to be here. So I'll get right into it. Um, first off, where did you find your love for photography and how did it lead you to becoming the photographer for the Cubs? So I am, was um, in yearbook through all through high school and I really was enjoying it then and I really got into sports then. Um, and then it lead on to going to York College of, Pens York College of Pennsylvania in 2015, I graduated. Um, I studied uh, fine art and emphasized in photography and I proceeded and pursued. Um, and then I did a bunch of internships such as working with the Reading Royals, the Hershey Bears, um, the City Islanders, the soccer team, the Harrisburg Senators. And then um, during COVID, this job just came up and I accepted it. Awesome. Nice. Nice. You know, you talk about your time at your college there. Did you ever have a chance to, you know, photograph any of their sporting events or sporting teams? Yeah, I was actually the team photographer for their sporting events. I did an internship with their athletic director. So I attended a bunch of their games and actually did my senior thesis um, for my graduation project on the women's rugby team. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So what, go, what goes into a thesis for photography? I mean, I know I have my own love for photography and it's more or less a hobby than it is like anything I've pursued like in a career wise. Because I was like you, like I, I took a photography class my senior year of high school just because I was like, oh, this seems easy. But then it like it kind of was. But at the same time, I was like, oh, this is really cool. And it's like artistic. And it was like the only way I personally could be like artistic in a way. But how how what, how does a how do you pr approach a thesis with photography? Is it like a like a catalog type of a thing? Um, yeah, so you like pick a subject that you're really interested in and then you just work from in and you build it and then you kind of make a storyline to it. Okay, so gotcha. kind of to build off your, you know, I have, you know, photography experience in high school as well, but it was a little bit different. So for me, I was a journalist student, you know, all three, four years throughout high school. And, you know, when COVID hit, you know, we couldn't, you know, allow students to go to the football games like that. So basically, I found out the only way that I could go watch my high school team and my friends play football was that if I went as a reporter and took pictures at the game. So for me, that was like a really cool experience. You know, my dad was always telling me, you know, before you go, make sure you don't end up like Joe Paterno and get your leg broken on the sidelines. Be careful, be careful. But like, you know, for me, that experience has actually translated very well over to, you know, in my experience in college here, because, you know, I've been tasked to photograph, you know, millions of football games or stuff for university communication. So having that experience is just so important, like you mentioned. Yeah, for sure. Is is hockey one of the hardest sports you've probably ever had to try to take pictures of? I mean, it's so fast paced. No, actually, it's not one of the actually hardest spots I had to shoot for. Actually, one of the hardest sports I've done so far that before was swimming. Which I is can see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that Whoops. one's that's a hard because of everyone trying to like do their different strokes and everything like that. You never know when they're going to come up out of the water to be able to capture that picture of them doing their position that they're doing for swimming. I was going to say, you talk about the hard, you know, the hard aspects of the swimming photography. You know, what about hockey? You know, what makes it so fun to photograph, but also very challenging because, like, it's also like for hockey, you know you don't really get a good angle, right? For football, you can sit up on the sidelines or for baseball, you can be kind of on the field. Hockey is one of the one sports where you can't really be in the area of play during when the action is happening. So how are you able to get those close-up shots and those good action shots while you're behind glass? Well, it's just uh, my eye. I think, I think I have a really good eye for photography. So I always know where that action is coming from, especially with all the experience I had. But it was definitely hard to get used to. Um, but I did have a lot of practice. My husband actually plays ice hockey as well. So I always used to go to his open hockey or his games and stuff like that. And I was able to practice that type of stuff. But also you need that fast type of shutter speed to be able to capture those fast actions or you're not going to get it or they're going to be blurry. Absolutely. I was actually going to get into that, but you covered it yourself. So that works perfectly considering I knew John plays, plays hockey and, and I figured you probably would have been at some of his games or practices, but um, what else I wanted to get into is, you know, what kind of equipment do you use? I mean, I mean, for anybody that's wanting to learn or get into it out there and figure out what they might want to go search for or get into as a, like for a beginner as well. 
So um, for years in high school, I actually had, I was shooting with, I actually started when I first started getting into photography, I used the Canon XS, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's an older style camera. So it wasn't what I wanted to use to capture that fast speed. Um, so then I switched to a Canon 7D and I used that for a very long time, um, but it did capture the action I wanted. And um, I would been using like a 70 to 200 millimeter lens with an F 2.8, which is a fast um, F stop to be able to capture those crisp actions. Um, but then during the season, this year, last season, I decided I wanted to upgrade my camera system because eventually the camera community is going to go mirrorless. Um, so that is with a no shutter behind the camera. So that it's just like an open window frame and the, just the lens hitting that. So um, I got a mirrorless camera now and I can't believe how much difference it has been using because I can push my ISO a lot faster, especially with the arena being a darker building. So that's also one of the other difficult things to be able to shoot in. It is a dark building, so you have to be able to learn how to press, push your ISO to be able to get that like, crisp, clean picture. You know, I was just about to ask you here. You know, the arena typically is a very hard environment when it comes to lighting and just the ability to capture those clean shots. How are you able to combat the difficulties of the lightning and kind of get those great shots in that moment? Well, that was a lot of practice. Um, I noticed with my older camera, it was very hard to push because I also noticed that I was starting to get grainy pictures because depending how far you push it, you can see that grain and it's not good to have that grain. Um, but since I upgraded into a new camera, I'm definitely seeing a big difference. And the higher you push your ISO in that building, it would be able to not see less grainy pictures. Now, I know, obviously, you're the team photographer and everything, but I see you running around on game days and sometimes at some certain events that we might have. But what other roles do you try to help out with as you see fit when you're running around trying to do your best to just be a team player for the whole club? Um, so during game days, I'm always running around. Um, I'm helping out at the front. I'm always helping Crystal getting the store sometimes ready together, whatever she needs help. Um, also getting stuff for he the head coach if he needs it um, to be done. Um, also during the game at sec every second period at the middle during the second period, I'm always the fan, always announcer, the fan of the game. So I always have to make sure I can yeah. find someone and take pictures at the same exact time to be able to get that experience for the fan of the game as well. That's, that's awesome because, you know, I've always enjoyed that part of the game. And to be honest with you, I never knew who it was that did that. So now I know the, <laughs> the boys behind the fan of the game, but to kind of build off that, how do you find the fan of a game, right? You know, the arena is full with a lot of passionate fans on game day. How are you able to like pick out that one fan that stands out above the rest? Um, usually I just find that person, like usually I'm spotting it out during the first period while I'm taking pictures sometimes like during those breaks and stuff, just looking around to see who I can find. Um, but I usually try to pick out the cute little kid that's cheering on screaming <laughs> and all having so much fun. You never know. They're always like, and then when you bring them chocolate over there, they're like, <laughs> of course we want to be the fan of the game. <laughs> A five pound chocolate bar. When do you want to be the fan of the game when you see that? Yeah. I, think I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> especially especially for a kid i mean the chocolate bar is about as tall as some of them you probably have found in recent uh, in the past yeah. as a lady, the chocolate bar probably weighs more than me honestly <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any other uh areas or like themes i guess i could say or like different types of subjects you like to shoot outside of sports and hockey um, so yeah, um, I do also, I do like to shoot, um, portraits. Um, they're also a lot of fun. Um, I do a lot of family sessions as well. Um, but I move mostly lean towards sports cause that's like one of my favorite things I like to do the most. Now. And I see a lot of times on the Instagram, the Cubs have posted the opportunities to purchase like a player package that you offer. Can you kind of walk us through what does that package include and kind of, how do you put the package together? Um, so right now I'm doing Christmas packages. As you know, Christmas is right around the corner. Can't believe it. But um, always this time of the year, I try to figure out a Christmas package. So I try to figure out what I can do best to offer. Um, so the families have a choice to choose. They can either do individual pictures. They can do. They can choose as many pictures as they want. They don't just have to focus on that one picture for the package. 
Um, and then I get them printed to them and hopefully get them to them before Christmas or before they leave for Christmas break. Because some of the parents do like them shipped or some of the parents are like, oh, you can just give it to my child. And hopefully they don't forget to bring it home for Christmas break. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one of the other things I kind of wanted to ask you here is, you know, the Cubs have a lot of great personalities on that team, right? You know, this team is really great, really passionate. They gel well in the locker room. Is there a certain player that you like to be the subject of your pictures the most that gives you the most, you know, funny pictures, the most quality pictures? What player stands out into your mind the most and why? Oh, man, that's a hard question. I mean, they're all so much fun. I I mean, with being now with the third season with them, um, there's all there's so many of them that I enjoyed hanging out with. But one of the one that cracks me up the most, I would say is M.A. I don't know why. Just, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> he just makes me laugh. He always has fun. Um, I can always choose him for different things. Uh, he's always very helpful. Um, I He's always funny and goofy. And he just he's one of my I. That's who I would say. They all have a great smile, but M.A.'s smile is just so contagious, and I'm sure that kind of radiates to the pictures you capture. <laughs> it does, for sure. You don't <laughs> see it much behind the mask. But no, but when he takes that mask off, it's nothing but cheesing over there. <laughs> yes, for sure, 100% sure. <laughs> so have you ever had a close call with any flying pucks at all, with uh, with your equipment or your camera specifically? Uh, yeah, I have. So when I was down shooting with the Reading Rose, um, after college, I did an internship with them. Um, when I graduated in 2015, and I worked with them all the way up until COVID. And then once COVID hit, I wasn't with them as much, um, because with the limited fans and all that stuff. Um, so I actually they have camera holes in their in their glass, so you yeah. could put your camera through the hole. And so that was kind of nice that you weren't always shooting through the glass. So it didn't make it as difficult, but one game I wasn't paying attention and my, a pug took my lens <laughs> and cracked it. <laughs> didn't spider no. the whole, didn't, It didn't actually spider like the actual lens, but it took off like the end part of it, but it still works. It's still in focus and it does what it needs to do. Oh, but yeah, goodness. it was not. A, and then you see all these like little pieces on the ice then afterwards. And I was like, oh my God, what just happened? I you were probably so it. embarrassed. I would have. I was, I was so mad too. There were so many things that went through that camera hole. If I didn't have it closed at a certain time, I had gloves come through it. I had sticks come through it. <laughs> So many different things when you don't have that thing closed. But of course, my camera was the one that night and just went. I was going to say, what wow. is what is the toughest part about remembering to close that and stay on top of the awareness? Because like that's a big part of hockey photography, right? And a lot of people don't realize that because you got to have your focus locked <laughs> in on for the perfect shot. But you also got to keep your head up because if you're so locked in for that perfect shot, you might have, you know, a piece of rubber start flying right at your cranium. Yeah, for sure. Have to always watch for pucks when you're taking pictures, depending. Like, I like to shoot on the bench always the third period. I always end up on the bench. Um, It's just one place I like to shoot because then I don't have to worry about shooting through the glass because sometimes you can get those different actions from the bench. So I always make sure I'm paying attention because I know they're on the bench too, but they're not protecting me. I have to protect my own self when I'm out there sometimes. That's why I have my helmet on, as you can see, on the bench. During nice little, period. Nice little brain bucket out there to protect yeah. Yeah, the precious gem inside the head right there. For sure. <laughs> Got to protect that brain. But another question I kind of wanted to ask you, you know, Coach Brennan Thompson, he seems very animated during games. Are there any chances that you get great pictures of him kind of, you know, being a vocal on the bench? Because he's the vocal leader on the bench. So and it's he gets quite animated. So I was wondering about that. Yeah, I do. Um, I do have get some of him occasionally, but um, I do have some photos of him exp on the bench as well. Just depends. It's kind of nice when you're on the opposite end and you're shooting from not like on the bench, but you're on the opposite side of the rink that you're facing their home bench. You can also get some good reactions on that side as well. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. What's uh What's been harder so far, capturing the players and the action on the ice or Zinnia, our new uh, uh, seeing eye puppy that's being in train or that's being trained on the ice right off the ice right now. There, I I love taking pictures of Zinnia. She's so much fun. <laughs> She's so interactive to get pictures of. She always has fun. Um, but yeah, I I shoot both. I like doing both. They're fun. 
we got to get the dog on the pod sometime soon. I'm just saying. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> got to get the dog and um and um Cubby, our new mascot. I can see it now. Pause and pod. Yeah. Oh my. Oh gosh, that would be fun. That yeah. would be that would just be us talking and just the dog just nodding, barking, and just barking, barking and then cu- <laughs> and then Cubby's just. Yeah. Cubby's just yeah yeah yeah. 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 High that five. Oh wait, no, we're on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic you know lauren i also wanted to ask you too like a lot of times we see these guys arrive to the rink dressed down to the nines looking very dapper and a lot of times they love to have those pictures of them rolling in in their best suits are you able to capture those pictures at all and how does that process work for you yeah i am able to um it's always fun to get to see them in their nice cowboy hats and stuff like that that's been the <laughs> new thing down there those cowboy hats but yeah, it is fun to capture them sometimes when walking in. It's kind of neat to see. Um, but I've been asking them, I was like, I hope we do something fun for Christmas. Are we going to find some Christmas suits? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I feel heard like some any, rumors. I heard I some like rumors if, too. Yeah, I feel uh, like we'll if anybody would come in dressed as Santa, it'd be M.A. Oh, yeah. It, that would be a good, that would be funny. Could you imagine that picture opportunity right there? That would be a great opportunity in picture. I, I asked him the other day, actually, before the game, I said, hey, if I get you some reindeer ears, would you put them on and wear them for warm ups and see what happens? <laughs> if they fall off, it's fine. But I think it would just be awesome to get one picture with you on reindeer ears with your, with your mask on. I think that would be awesome for the holiday season. No, we definitely should. We should definitely make that happen. I think it would be an awesome thing to happen. <laughs> oh, 100%. He would definitely be a good sport about it, too. He would. He oh, would. He'd be all for it. Oh, yeah. I know he would be. I just don't know if the ref would be like, yeah, man, you got to take those off. It's not USA Hockey approved. Well, I think it would be okay for warm-ups, probably yeah. not the game, but at least for yeah. warm-ups to get a few yeah. pictures because they'll probably fall off. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine, though, if he wore those for an entire game? <laughs> oh, my. That would be funny. He'd be more like the he'd be more like the size of an elk, let alone a, a reindeer or a deer. He's for his height, it'd be more like an elk. He's, he'd be like massive. a he'd be like a sixteen pointer right there. Yeah, or a moose or something. He's so he's so tall. He'd be the tall. Or if he's or if he dresses up as Santa, he'd be like the Santa from the Polar Express and just look like an absolute giant. Oh man, that's that's fantastic. <laughs> He'd be doing the opposite, though. He'd be the brick wall and not give any gifts, not give any goals up. But uh, Exactly. But <laughs> speaking of, you know, capturing the players, doing some work around the building and everything like that, what kind of relationships have you been able to form with the team and the staff? Um, obviously, it's it's a really tight family. Everybody works together and everybody tries to help out each other. So what kind of relationships have you been able to form? Um, I've been able to form good relationships. I mean, I always get good relationships with this, with the, with, especially with the players. Um, I always have to have good relationships with them, especially with the hockey, um, especially with the photo community, because there's so many people out there that like to, um, use people's photos and steal them. So that's the other thing too. Like I always make sure, Hey, if you're going to use them, I don't mind if you use them but you just have to tag me in on Instagram or Facebook or whatever you use them for because of that whole thing. But usually every year they've been really good with it. So bonding with it, with the kids is really awesome. And the players, I would do, say. Do any of them ever like specifically come and be like, Hey, hey, can you try to get me when I'm like in this certain spot or in a certain point in the game, just be like, oh. can you get an action shot of me with a slap shot or, or if I'm celebrating? There is, there's a bunch of them that say that a hundred percent sure. <laughs> you know, I was about to say, there's probably the amount of requests you get of them coming up being like, hey, Lauren, if I score, you better get me doing the celly. You better yeah. get the celly. How many times does that request come across? <laughs> that comes across a lot. Like, they're like, did you get that goal? Did you get that goal? <laughs> I think so. I hope so. <laughs> they're like, good. It's going on the gram later. It's going on the gram. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh. I see. I noticed that you have the hockey fights cancer T-shirt on of the Cubs, but can you just speak on, you know, how amazing that they've been able to get involved in the community? We just had our military game. Uh, we had the the Hershey, like the what was it, the combination of the Bears? Yeah, it was and, like the Hershey um, collab. Yeah, yeah, the Hershey yeah. collab with the Bears. Can you just speak on, you know, the team's involvement in the community? Yeah. Um. So last year, um, I went to a couple of their community events, and I did do some already this year as well. 
Um, but yeah, they're great with the community. It's awesome how we're getting with the community. I know during the COVID season, we really couldn't get too much with the community. Um, but I'm glad that we're getting back, um, being able to help each other. Um, it was kind of nice when we went to the food bank because we we're helping people that need help with food, especially going to Milton Hershey School, helping with the kids there as well. So I'm happy that we're getting involved with the community. And you with, know, oh, sorry, Josh. No, I was, gonna, I was just going to ask you kind of to build off that real quick here. You know, those pictures of them in the soup kitchens and in the food banks and stuff like that. Are you traveling with them? kind of documenting these events are those your pictures or those like other people kind of taking those so those actually were other people taking them um sometimes i can't attend the other events due to um, my other job so they are actually um some other people that are willing to take the photos that went with them as well but i try to go to their community events if it works in my schedule i try my best to get there so i can get those pictures because a lot of people like to see how much we're involved with the community you know, it's more than just a hockey team, right? I mean, it's a family, it's a community. I mean, with the Thanksgiving and Christmas season coming up, I mean, they do a lot for this community, and this organization. The Boudreaux's do a fantastic job. Shout out to them for making sure they understand the importance, you know, and the vitalness of, you know, having this community, have our back and have the community's back as well. It's a great relationship. Yeah, 100% sure it is. That's the whole point of the halo on the on exactly. the Cub Cub logo. It's a sense of community and being involved and being those leaders in the community and helping it thrive and survive and grow and just being there for everybody as much as they possibly can. And so with all the events that we've done in the past, done this year, I think I might know the answer, but what's your favorite one you've captured or are hoping to capture? Like physically with taking pictures. Physically, my favorite one of the year is the teddy bear toss. I knew it. I was I just it. about to say. And when wait, when is that this year? Um, I think it's in December, maybe. Is that one of our December games, Clay? I think I, it is. I believe so because I they go they go to a drive and uh, then they wind up go there. It's like a whole thing for like kids. Yeah, they take and them I like think it goes to a school or like yeah, a, yeah, they take like a school. Yeah, last year we took the kids, um, the all the bears to um a school, Donegal Elementary School, which was downtown Harrisburg. Mm, I know that's um, we took all the bears to every class. Every classroom got a bag of bears that they could have and take home for Christmas. And then we also read them Christmas books, which was kind of mm. nice too. That's awesome. You know, it's probably a lot of good chances to get so many good shots. You know, the players jumping to the bears you know picking up the bears and the fans throwing the bears like do you have a favorite like shot that you're able to capture during that so like that's that night's so cool alone mm, it is um i actually i love getting the the reaction of the players like after those bears fly because it's like amazing once you see them just start flying they're like Holy they become God. like children again it's yeah. like so cool yeah it is it's a lot of fun yeah that's like the coolest thing that i've kind of picked up on yeah, that's game's a lot of fun. Yeah. So as we round out this episode as a professional photographer yourself, what tips would you have for anybody who is gaining an interest in photography or who would want to get into it uh, and start and get started? Um, so I would just say that if you're in um just go out there, get a camera. I mean, you can start out as your budget as you're willing to and just start shooting and shooting and shooting and just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. It does take time to practice. Um, but as long as you keep learning, you'll get, you'll get it. You know, and then one last question from me here before we have, what are you most excited about with this cub season? You know, kind of getting in the heat of it here. They're on a recent tear, you know, the most franchise win here in history, you know, what are you most excited about, you know, as the next couple games approach? I'm just excited. I'm, I love it. I love to see us win. Um, I'm excited to hopefully get some more good winning shots and celebrations and all that stuff. And hopefully maybe this year we'll make it to nationals. That would be just awesome. It would just be awesome. This team is doing amazing this year and hopefully we can just keep riding it that way. This team is fantastic this year, you know, absolutely. All right. With that, Lauren, thank you for joining us and thank you for capturing all the, the big moments and the big, the, the happy times here in, at the Hershey Cubs. And on this edition of The Roar, I'm Clay Thomas alongside Joshua Gerhart. Find us on YouTube at Hershey Cubs The Roar, as well as at Hershey Cubs on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, or Hershey Cubs on Facebook. Hit that like button, subscribe, and follow us on all, account all accounts. Fear the Roar.